Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Bricks. I'm Daryl and I have some exciting news today. <laughs> and what that news is, well, I'm finished with my commission job. So if this is something that interests you, stick around because it's coming up. Now, just because I absolutely love how this thing looks all lit up, uh, I'm going to start with it here. And to show you, I even have the train running. Yes, I do. <laughs> I have the train. Um, and it just, it really adds to the touch and the detail of this. It's such an amazing looking build. Uh, I was really happy to be able to be part of it. And I was really happy that they picked me to do this. And it has just been a huge, I mean huge, learning experience doing all this. But I have to say, I am definitely hooked on lighting now. I love how it looks. It just gives you such a realistic feel and appearance to any city. And I can't wait to actually get some work done on my city. Uh, I will be doing a bunch of different things to show you guys all what has taken place on this build because I want to take an in-depth walkthrough of everything that I have going on. Just to show you, every single car that is on the main drag is illuminated, including the fire truck with the blinking light, and we even have a little water fountain down at the very end over at Assembly Square. Uh, I had to do a lot of custom lighting as far as a lot of these cars go. And what I mean by that is, for example, the Porsche. There actually, I think, is a kit, but I kind of liked some of the kits that I had seen anyway. Um, it's an aftermarket kit and you can install it yourself. And that's what I did with a lot of these vehicles and install the different aftermarket kit. Because for me, it was much easier to hide the wires because as you can tell, now just to show you, there is wires underneath each one of these cars, but the way that they're placed and located on the cars, um, they're actually quite hidden. And it, it, it makes for a really good look when you're looking at everything on Main Street. Uh, and I even did really special details, like I included the little checkered cab, for example. Now, because it's much easier to talk about this with the lights on and show everything that I'm talking about, I went ahead and turned the lights on in my Lego room anyway. Um, but some of the things that I do want to point out, it's like this building, for example, that building, for example, are just custom facades. And here's what I mean by that. They're actually a very thin building, and they're done that way on purpose, because if I made these a full size and depth building, it would have interfered with the train track. Now, this back side of the build, I will be the first to admit it is not the most attractive in the world, but it wasn't intended to be, as it will never be seen. But there are other areas that <laughs> won't be seen e either. For example, this entire train track along the back side of the building, it'll never be seen. And then I did the ballasting out in the front, and then I also did the ballasting down around this side of the building. And again, mind you, It'll never be seen, but it was my fear that if the camera ever got to a point to where it could see portions of this, I wanted to make sure it was decorative. But something else I do want to point out that you'll notice, no wire is visible on the back sides of the buildings as well. Just like from the front of the building, there is absolutely no wiring visible either. And that was all part of the process, and it was part of the process that made it kind of difficult. Now, I'm not going to say that nothing's completely invisible at all, because there are spots where you can see wires. And here's what I mean by that. For example, on the back side of this building, because the way the kit comes, they want you to wire it on the exterior. And the best way I could find it was by hiding it through the plant, under the trash can, and then out the side. But that's how I did all the buildings. I wired everything out the sides of the building. And then there's a few little spots, and you really have to look for it where you can see wire. But again, it's spots that will never be noticed or seen. Like for example, right there's another spot you can see some of the wire because you'll never be looking at the back side of the building. As this entire project was planned with this particular location being the viewing angle. There's gonna be three viewing angles on this entire city. My understanding is there's gonna be one angle here. You're supposed to have one angle here. And again, that's why I put the trees and stuff in the corner. It was to hide the back side of the building, but again, like I showed you just earlier in the video, there is some detailing back there just in case it is visible. 
and then even over here, because this will be camera number three, we'll be viewing from this way. And again, I ballasted the track and whatnot over there just in case you could see it. But to me, one of the very important things to include was the Statue of Liberty and to put her off in the distance because this is going to be displayed in New York City. There is a few other things that I can't really show you right now. At least I don't have permission yet. And what it is, is that little hollow spot that's in right there, there's a special building that actually goes there, or actually special billboards. And those will be put up, and I will be showing those at a later date. But for now, like I said, they cannot be visible. But something else I did have to do is I had to put my name on this somewhere, as I always feel like with any artist, they have to put their name on their artwork. And that was my way of doing it. It was kind of like the welcome sign for the city. So I put my Bevins Brick sign right there. But again, I could not be happier with this. Um, there's an unbelievable amount of custom work that I don't think a lot of people would really notice. Uh, unless I point out, like for example, there's a lot of custom tree work here. And then I have the custom telephone pole or the power pole, if you will. And then I even put a small transformer here with some little barriers to keep them from getting hit. And then including again on this side, I got the Bevins brick sign. And then I have a bunch of trees here. Now something I want to point out is this is the tree from the bookstore. But I changed the mounting base on it, as you can see in there, to make it look more natural and to fit in with the landscaping. And then I added a bunch more landscaping around it to make it blend in very well. Um, even these uh, railroad crossing signs. And I'll be showing you a link in this video here about these specific signs, but these are custom made signs. But again, my point in always staying over at this end of the table is this is the primary viewing angle of the city. Um, so this is where everything will be seen. And that's part of the thing I want to point out here. Um, using the Lego road plates, part of the important thing to me or part of the important thing to the person that's paying to have this build done anyway, was to keep it and make the city street look very busy. And to me, the way to do that was, number one, to get rid of all the trees and such that were included with these particular sets. And again, I do have this, the trees still here, as this is one of the trees. There's another tree. And right here is the fire station's tree. Um, all I did is I got them off Main Street to make Main Street look a lot more clean. And then again, as far as tile work and such, to me, because all the actual uh, modular buildings come with a dark gray sidewalk with a light gray border. So to keep that feel, I guess would be a good way to put it, in touch with the rest of the build, I just went ahead and continued that pattern out because I thought that made it for a really nice look to have that double actual area <laughs> filled in with the dark blue gray as well. And I feel it complemented the buildings really well. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. And then like with the corner garage, anywhere that you were driving was light blue gray. Even the fire hall was light blue gray. So up here in the front, I did two small parking spots. And of course I had to do those in light blue gray as well. And then even the crossing over the railroad tracks, I did in light blue gray. Now again, coming back to this area that will never actually be seen ever up close, um, I wanted to have a, a nice appearance just in case you could visibly see it in some manner and fashion. So I went ahead and made it look like there is actually a railroad crossing there as well, even though there really isn't. And here's the thing with that, because I would not ever leave anything like that because it doesn't have a nice slope. As you can see, the one at the front of the city has a very nice slope. This was just a decorative touch in case it was physically seen. And you can see that over here as well. And anyway, one more final scan of all the lighting. Uh, again, could not be happier. I think it looks absolutely amazing. And I just want to try and get as much of it in as I can. <laughs> Trying to show both sides of the street and not trip on all the parts I have on the floor. <laughs> Uh, but again, couldn't be happier. This was actually an amazing project. And uh, I really look forward to adding a bunch of lights to my actual city. Now for the really unfun part of this project. <laughs> Everything that I just showed you, I have to pull apart, package, and get ready to transport it to its home. Now to show you what I mean by packaging everything up, the entire display, the entire city was made in a modular fashion. So looking at the back of this, and I'm gonna try and show you here, you'll see I have a couple spots. Again, this was an area, uh, actually I'm missing one there, I gotta put it back. There's a couple spots though where I put these two by six plates. 
And the reason that I put those there is because it's an easy location to disconnect things. Because now that I pulled this one plate off in the way that I wired everything, the wires come out the side of the building. So now all I simply have to do is grab that building, wedge it up just a little bit, and here it comes. Now, now that I have it up, I just simply fish my USB port out of it. I'm going to lay this to the side, and then I'm going to wrap this in saran wrap. So that's already one building that's out and ready to go. Now, because I know not everybody wants to see me, watch me, whatever, pack up an entire city, I'm going to finish doing that process in another video. But again, I just wanted to show everybody this awesome and amazing city and how it comes apart. But anyway, as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Bricks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. And again, if you want to see how this gets packed up, check in another day or two because I will have a video showing how I do just that. So anyway, until next time, we'll see you on Bevan's Bricks.